Are you sad because of porn? That is sexual arousal dysfunction? Well, I'm Dr. Trish Lee, and I'm glad to have you back on another episode of Porn Brain Rewire, the podcast, because in this podcast, we are going to connect sexual dysfunction with porn use, masturbation, and hypersexuality. I'm going to show you how your sexual behaviors can lead to and perpetuate sexual dysfunction of all different kinds. Yes, we have a lot to dig into this fine episode. So here's what we're gonna do. In this episode, I'm first going to lay out sexual arousal dysfunction for you. And while I do that, I'm going to also bring you back to thinking about your baseline arousal brain pattern and how its struggle or its being less than optimal can lead to sexual arousal dysfunction. Hopefully you'll be able to connect all those dots. Number two, I wanna tell you a story about Sam, my very first client who uh, in 2024, my book will be out into the world, Hell or High Water, it's called Mind Over Porn. Uh, it is slated to be released in early 2024 where you'll learn about Sam's entire story. But in today's episode, I wanna share with you part of the story of his sexual arousal dysfunction, which actually I don't talk about in the book. So I'm going to kind of encapsulate the intellectual ideas that we talk about in the first section into the story of Sam and how he struggled and suffered and how his relationship was suffering and what he did about it, which will lead us to number three is, in fact, you can heal from sexual arousal dysfunction. It's the number one question I'm asked these days. When I talk to men, mostly young men, which is terrifying, they will say to me, do you really think that I can heal and get back to normal, quote unquote normal, their word? And my answer is absolutely 100%. And I will say to them, hear me when I say that, 100% yes, if you do the right things, which I'm gonna tell you in the third section of today's podcast. So let us dive in. Now, here's what I want you to know. If you are struggling with sexual dysfunction, you are not alone in today's digitally digitally connected world. It's a digital world. And unfortunately, the digital world is creating a lot of arousal dysfunction for many, many people. So you're not alone. It's in the millions. And especially if you are a younger person struggling with sexual dysfunction, before the peak of your sexuality, this is par for the course when porn and masturbation is involved. So I am so sorry that you are struggling and suffering, which is why I'm here trying to educate you and inspire you to get the help that you need because you can heal, but you're not alone, my friend. There are so many people who are caught up in this right now, feeling scared and alone and not knowing what to do. And it's such a taboo subject that nobody but me wants to talk about it. So here we are, let's talk. So when I talk about sexual arousal dysfunction, what am I talking about? Well, as in life, everything exists on a continuum. So in your journal, get out your pleather journal if you've been following me on this podcast and write some of these ideas down and draw them. This is going to be an exercise for today. So draw a line, draw a line across the page, draw a tick line, you know, a going, uh, your line's going to be horizontal, draw a vertical line on one end and a vertical line on the other. This is our continuum of sexual dysfunction and it has to do with arousal. So all the way to the right is erectile dysfunction where you cannot get an erection and you cannot have an orgasm. Complete sexual dysfunction, meaning there is absolutely no sexual function. So we're down there where you cannot make it work. Now, if you back up that continuum, a couple tick points on this continuum, you might have the ability to get a softer erection for a little while, but not the ability to maintain an erection. You may have the ability to get a softer erection and you don't have the ability to culminate in orgasm. It can, this continuum can go all the way down to you can get an erection and have an orgasm with porn or masturbation, but when it comes time to perform with your partner, it takes what I call the three ring circus to get you um, aroused enough to even be able to participate in 
your sex life with your partner. Now this end of the continuum is really important for me to have you understand is that many people think of erectile dysfunction as not being able to get an erection. That's why I've entitled this video sexual arousal dysfunction because I want to include this continuum. So I want you to know if you can get an erection and have an orgasm with very high levels of arousal, and that might be through porn, that might be through masturbation, that might be through hooking up with people or escorts or dating apps. Those are super normal mental and physical stimuli, which means you're able to have an erection when your brain is getting 15 level arousal. But being with a partner on a good day will be an eight to nine arousal in your brain. That's healthy arousal. Anywhere, you know, in the six, seven, eight, that's a healthy level arousal that another healthy human being in a healthy sexual experience or relationship would be able to provide for you. But if your brain is used to level 15 and now you go to be with your partner on a great day, she's a nine. Now the gap between the arousal that you're used to and that you need to be able to achieve an erection and be able to have an orgasm, we're talking the difference between 15 and nine. That is a six point spread. And nine is a good day for your partner. If she has kids, if she works, if she's sick, if she's tired, we're going to say she's a six on a really good day. Nine is definitely looking for, you've had a lot of time, you're on vacation, you're feeling really chill, and you're prepped to be together. And I'm going to talk about that in just a second. That goes back to baseline arousal. So what I want you to know for this very moment is sexual arousal dysfunction can be all the way down there on the continuum that when it comes time to be with someone that you want intimacy with. So this is what I want you to hear. Intimacy with a partner is different than objectifying somebody just using their body for pleasure. It is a question I get all the time. No, just using someone for high level pleasure sex is not the same as intimacy and a healthy sexual relationship with a partner that you care about, which is what most people want. And I'm, we're not even going to get into that discussion right now, but we know that humans are pair bonding creatures. Most people want a partner. And so when you cannot be aroused with your partner, something is off. Hear me when I say that. What that something is, is your brain performance pattern. So when you have a healthy arousal pattern in your brain, what that means is your brain is in a medium speed mode of calm focus. You feel calm and focused going into the world. Right now I feel calm and I feel focused presenting this information to you. And I don't feel rushed. I don't feel overly stressed. I'm not fatigued. I don't feel overly tired. I'm in that sweet spot of medium calm focus speed. Now, if you're off in the extremes of wired and tired, a brain that's anxious or stressed, a brain that's fatigued or overwhelmed, that is going to take your brain out of this optimal mode into what I call strained brain. In strained brain, your brain, if it's been exposed to porn and if it's still caught up in a porn cycle, is going to want to go back into the screen or going to want to go back for more masturbation to very quickly and artificially shift it into that medium speed. But it's artificial. It's not neurological regulation. It's not self-regulation. It's compulsion or dependency on dopamine to shift you out of wired and tired, stressed and fatigued, by stimulating and soothing that brain pattern simultaneously, which is what porn does. It will stimulate you and soothe you, artificially make you feel better for a time, but ultimately after it wears off, you're back into wired and tired even more, which will push you back towards those behaviors. That's strained brain. Now follow me on this. If you're in strained brain, when it's time to be in your life and you're only getting this artificial feel-good feeling from a level 15 stimulus, 
That is why you end up with sexual arousal dysfunction because your baseline brain arousal is wired and tired. And it needs something at a very high level to shift you out of it, creating more wired and tired. So now it's time to be with your honey and she's not a 15. She can't shift you out of that wired and tired. You're stuck in hypo arousal and hyper arousal simultaneously, which are on the polar opposite extremes of healthy arousal. Now, if you stay in strain brain for a long time, continuing to go back to porn and masturbation, continuing to tip yourself into artificial calm focus for a time, what happens is if you do it a lot, you will get stuck in drained brain. Drain brain is you're now stuck in that medium speed, but it's not calm focus. It's lack of motivation. It's not feeling motivated back to your life because there's so much dopamine that's flooded the reward center in your brain. It's become desensitized. That desensitized reward center can't feel good anymore from life and can barely feel good anymore, even from the 15 level stimulus of porn unless you ramp it up, of course, which I don't want you to do. So drained brain falls out of and comes out of strained brain. So here's the message for you. If you have sexual arousal dysfunction, you're either in strained brain or drained brain. The worse your sexual arousal dysfunction is on this continuum, you are shifting from strained brain into drained brain. But if you're listening and you're like, I don't have any sexual arousal dysfunction, this is what I want you to hear, is that if you're continuing to be wrapped up in the 4D cycle of hypersexuality, you are reinforcing strain brain very often. So if you're going back to porn, the 4D cycle is dopamine drip, dopamine deluge or flood, dopamine drowning, which helps you feel numbed out, Dopamine deficit, which means your life is getting worse and will push you back into the screen. So when you're in that strain brain mode, you are reinforcing the brain pattern that makes for sexual arousal dysfunction. So if you're not experiencing it yet and you keep going in this cycle, porn and masturbation and hypersexuality and sexual acting out, you will eventually tip your brain into strain brain and if you keep doing it you will reinforce strain brain and push your brain into drained brain and i don't want anybody in strain brain or drained brain what i'm here to do is to help you realize this and start backing yourself out right now before you get yourself into a situation and i'm gonna tell you sam's story in a second but first i want to share with you a conversation that i had on the phone the other day um, with um, a consultation. So, hey friend, if you're listening. Um, and just so you know, if you're interested in a consultation with me, there's a link on my website on the contact page that you can do a discovery session or a consultation with me. I offer consultations very in a very limited fashion because I know how hard it is for people to, how difficult, we won't go with the ED puns here, how difficult it is for people to share their story when you're wrapped up in this whole thing. Most people I've talked to haven't told anybody about this. That's why I do consultations. I want to be there if you need to tell somebody. So please schedule a consultation so that we can talk about it. But I was in a consultation and a very young man, early 20s, said to me that he's had erectile dysfunction for about seven years. And he's in early 20s, early to mid, mid 20s, moving towards mid. So if he's had sexual arousal dysfunction issues for seven years. So if we do the math, which I'm terrible at, by the way, I don't know if I've ever shared that with you. So 25 minus seven would take him back to 18, hopefully. So if he's 18 years old, when he started to experience sexual arousal dysfunction issues like ED, and even if it's that softening and not able to fully be with a partner, if he experienced that at 18, it meant it was brewing for at least the couple of years before that. You know, we'll say three years. That'll take him to 15. But if he started watching porn when he was 11 or 12, that strained brain had been brewing for seven years before he started to experience erectile dysfunction issues. That is likely the case for you if you are experiencing sexual dysfunction 
problems. So this is a long-term problem that has been brewing over a very long time. So the solution does not happen overnight. So you need to figure this out and then you need to take aligned action to start backing yourself out of porn and masturbation and to start resensitizing the reward center in your brain and to fire up those reward pathways. Okay, so let's segue to number two, Sam's story. So Sam thankfully gave up porn a long time ago. He's not gone back to the screen in years. So of course he thinks he's good to go. But of course, it, as in life, stress is the number one thing that will threaten to take you out. So he's committed to not watching porn. So he's been very good about not doing that because that's what he's committed to and he's well on his path to not ever going back into the screen. But part of his habit was a masturbation habit over time. <clears throat> so he would masturbate a lot when he was watching porn a lot. And the word a lot is important. So follow me on this. So he would watch porn a lot, masturbate a lot, gave up porn. So he would re in inherently there was a reduction in masturbation. Now stressors come in. So he starts to masturbate more because he's stressed. And we know masturbation is a mood regulation activity. It's dumping a lot of dopamine into your brain by a high level arousal template fantasy or physical activity. It's high level mental and physical stimulation. So he doesn't really realize it, but it's a moving backwards activity for him. So when I talk to him, the discussion is he, well, let me back up for a second because I didn't share this with you, is that he is now complaining of sexual arousal dysfunction issues when he tries to be with his wife. He's not able to perform which is stressing him out even more, making it so that he can't perform more and basically making him masturbate more because he's feeling more stressed out. This is the downward spiral of porn masturbation and erectile dysfunction and sexual arousal dysfunction. This is how they all go together in a downward spiral fashion is that one pushes you into the other, which pushes you back into the other. And before you know it, you're in a negative feedback loop, downward spiral. So tries to be with his partner, but he can't because he's been masturbating more, which means his reward center is becoming more desensitized again, even though he's not watching porn, which then because there's performance anxiety and he can't be with her, that's pushing him back into more masturbation, which is reinforcing strained brain and drained brain. But he doesn't realize any of it because of this comment. And this is what I wanted you to hear. When I talked to him, he said, I've been masturbating less than I ever have historically. And you know what my reply was. My reply was less is a relative term, my friend, meaning even though it's less than historically, it's still too much. It's still desensitizing his brain. So even though it feels less to him, it's still too much. And it's reinforcing the pathways through fantasy and more excessive physical stimulation through masturbation. So what he's doing is he's reinforcing the need for, you know, it might not be 15, but it's a level 12 stimulation from fantasy and from masturbation, which it's not the same as when he's with his partner at a nine on a good day. So hopefully you're following me. So if you're experiencing any of this, your brain is in strained brain or drained brain. Okay. So number three, what do you do about it? Well, your options exist in the pyramid of possibility. If you heard my podcast episode, because I'm not here to sell you anything, I'm here to help you. I'm here to inspire you and empower you. But if you invest your resources, your time, energy, and money into yourself, you will heal your brain faster. So let's start with top tier. Top tier is to schedule your QEEG brain map with me and I can share with you visually, you can see with your own eyes, how your brain is performing. If you're stuck in drained brain, if you're stuck in strained brain, if you're transitioning, you'll be able to see it. And I will be able to tell you in that assessment precisely what your brain needs. 
It is a one hour Zoom. You can take your map at home. I work with people all over the world. The way that it works is when you sign up for it, all the directions are automated and the pricing changes. So I'm not gonna share the pricing, but you can look on the website page because I change, sometimes the prices go up, sometimes they go down and then these videos I'm held culpable to it. So please go to the website if you're interested, but just know the way that it works is when you sign up, you download professional software, you purchase hardware that's around $300 in United States, US currency. And then once you have the hardware, you're able to take your own brain map at home. Very shortly after that, we get on a Zoom and I explain it all to you. I have intake paperwork, so I know what's going on in your life and your brain, and we break it down together and we make a plan. That's what that assessment is. After that, if you're interested in working with me in neurofeedback coaching, we can use high level technology to pull your brain out of drained brain, pull your brain out of strained brain and get it back into the optimal mode, maybe for the first time ever. And that is work that I do all day, every day with people. So if you're interested, please check out the assessment. There's a web page about neurofeedback coaching on my website. Check it out. If it feels good, schedule the assessment or schedule the consultation. Okay, top tier, that's top tier, working with a highly um, educated, top tier, specialized professional to help you heal your brain. Top tier, number one, up at the top of the pyramid of possibilities. Now, in the middle of the pyramid of possibilities is a program that I just got done making. It is called Three Steps to Heal Erectile Dysfunction. It covers the whole range of sexual dysfunction and everything that's wrapped up in it. It's a pretty awesome program where I do lay out how to behaviorally back yourself out of this, but also how to use some high level um, tech and services. So that is available to you. Right now it's at an introductory price, the lowest it's ever going to be. Also, please check that out on my website, drtrishley.com, erectile dysfunction, it's there for you. That program is awesome. It's gonna teach you what you need to know and it's going to give you the tools to back yourself out because this actually is a very complex issue that I'm trying to simplify in this podcast. Now, if you don't wanna invest any of your money into this, then investing your time and energy goes back to what I just shared with you, the, and the solution's always in the problem. So the problem is that your brain is desensitized and it's constantly being put into strained brain unless it has dopamine flowing at high levels to make you feel good. So clearly the solution is to stop desensitizing your brain and start resensitizing your brain. So here I'm gonna give you one brain hack strategy and your brain hack strategy is figure out all the ways that you're desensitizing your brain sexually or just using technology. Technology resonates at 60 hertz, so even regardless of what you're consuming, your brain is becoming wired and tired every time you expose it to your tech, to your screen time. So figure that out, and then especially figure out sexual behaviors that are at an 11 plus. They have to be stopped, which can be very, very difficult. And if that's very difficult for you, I also offer a 90 day program for porn and sexual behaviors, check out my website under Porn Brain Rewire. Okay, so you have to stop desensitizing your brain and start resensitizing. So how do you resensitize? The easiest way is to figure out how to get dopamine from your life and start doing it again. So since I started making these videos, which happened epiphenomenally, I never planned to, I just wanted the world to know this stuff, is that I've always said to you, get on purpose in your work, your relationships, and your hobbies. That's the secret sauce. It's like, what's the secret sauce on a Big Mac? It's actually, you know, a combination of ketchup and mayonnaise and pickles, but the combo is what makes it so fantastic. Right now, the combination of getting on purpose in your work, reestablishing the connection in all your relationships, and engaging in the hobbies that you love, that's the secret sauce, that is it. But that might be difficult for you to do if you're caught up in the 4D cycle. So that stop desensitizing and start resensitizing 
is the most important piece. Stop desensitizing. And many people cannot stop desensitizing without professional help, which is why I offer the 90 day program. If you get into the 90 day program, I will teach you how to unwire the brain pattern, the strained brain pattern that needs the screen. I will teach you how to rewire your brain back towards the healthy optimal pattern. I will teach you how to use technology to give your brain a workout to keep pulling it back into the optimal mode. I will teach you how to hardwire your brain into that optimal mode, protecting the foundation that you're building long term. And I will help you figure out how to reduce and to manage stress so that moving forward, you don't need porn, you don't need masturbation, you don't need fantasy. You've got the lifestyle that you've always wanted, so none of that is necessary. You don't need dopamine at high levels. So that is the solution. So if you can't stop desensitizing, you need more help and support. In the 90 day program, I run a meeting every month personally so that I can answer people's questions. When you get into that program, I'm trying to help you succeed. I'm trying to help you move forward. So if you're inspired for more help, please go to my website, check out Porn Brain Rewire if you have to, if you need to stop desensitizing and you need help doing it. If you want to learn more about what creates sexual arousal dysfunction, check out the ED page. If you want to work with me directly, schedule your QEEG brain map. There's three tabs there. I reduce pages to make it easy peasy for you to figure out how to proceed. I would love to help you. Now, if that's not in the cards yet, follow me here. Stay on this podcast with me because I will continue to bring I will continue to bring you the information and hopefully the inspiration that you need to kick this thing to the curb, heal your brain, and be able to be with your honey in a really meaningful way and have probably the best sex you've ever had in your life once your brain rewires. For real, people tell me that all the time. So it's there for the taking. So if you don't want to invest yet, if you're not there yet, stay with me here in the podcast. Go over to YouTube and subscribe. We're almost up to 200,000 subscribers, which is really cool because it's 200,000 brains that are healing. So awesome. Become a subscriber over there because I always put out videos and shorts. So stay with me, my friend, because I'm here for you. Okay. And until next time, as always, control your brain or it'll control you. I'll see you next time.